بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سال خان یوٹیوب چینل ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی اسٹڈی دا کیریکٹرسٹک فیچرس اے بریف انٹروڈکشن آف دا سالڈ ڈائلیکٹرکس فرام دس ویڈیو وی اسٹارٹ ڈسکسنگ دی دی بریک ڈاؤن میکینزم آف سالڈ انسولیشن دا دا پروسیس بائی وچ اٹ فیلس نا اوور ہیئر دس از ناٹ دیٹ سمپل پروسیس اوور ہیئر اٹ از بیسیکلی a time mechanism situation it is the breakdown process it widely is widely distributed in terms of time how is that so so let us start discussing let me give the heading first is the breakdown of solid insulation okay so what did i say that it is basically a time based mechanism and how is this so have a look if i draw a graph if i draw a graph let's say if this is the time and this is generally in years and this is the breakdown voltage vb in megavolts or kilovolts or whatever so we have some sort of this sort of a graph this sort of a graph which means we have different mechanisms of breakdown different processes the first one that occurs is the intrinsic breakdown intrinsic breakdown after that you have an electromechanical third is thermal then you have got erosion yes erosion you have tracking and the final one is treeing now what do i mean by this we will explain this each and every one each one by one okay so the thing is that in intrinsic you see the breakdown voltage is very less but the time is very short in treeing the time taken is very long but then the breakdown voltage is less so which means this is a function of time we see them one by one i talk about the intrinsic first intrinsic breakdown in solid insulation is what we will not discuss it this is the same this is the electronic phenomena which we saw previously in the gas insulations as well this is a townshunt type of breakdown where you have what you have very high electric fields you have electron multiplication leading to an avalanche of current leading to breakdown right this is an electronic mechanism so we will not discuss it this is the same as we have previously seen collision ionization is the process i will just write over here is collision ionization but the thing is that this is not a practical a scenario this is not possible in practice why because this intrinsic strength is very very high i told you in the last video about intrinsic strength then this is from 1 megavolt per centimeter to about 10 megavolt per centimeter and even higher so this thing is not practically possible in practice on insulations this much of a voltage does not happen to occur right so which means that this intrinsic breakdown or this intrinsic strength is only achieved under controlled laboratory conditions so this is only in the laboratory this occurs this does not occur in practice i will write over here that this does not occur in practice is that fine it is so it does not occur in practice this is only in the laboratory for insulation testing you can see this is the ultimate the maximum breakdown strength of the material fine occurring in a very short time you can, you, you you check the dielectric strength of a material how much time does it take seconds maybe right and the breakdown voltage is very very high coming to number 2 is the electromechanical breakdown is the topic of today electro mechanical breakdown now over here have a look i have two terms number one is electro the second is mechanical so i have got both electrical and mechanical parameters would be involved over here 
we talked about electrical strength we talked about mechanical strength in the previous video a condition for this is that this is only applicable to viscoelastic materials only applicable to viscoelastic materials what are viscoelastic materials viscoelastic materials are those materials which could be compressed that materials which can be compressed now as i told you most of the in solid insulation that we have are polymers polymer class and what is polymer class so they are long chain molecules they are what they are processed from molten state processed from melt solidified heated up for example rubber what do you have rubber is what rubber is a milky sort of a material found in trees latex you call it right and then you solidify it you heat it up you process it you solidify it to give you rubber similarly pvc and other polymer insulation so this is only applicable to that class of materials this is not applicable to wood porcelain right so electromechanical breakdown in this what do you have is you compress you compress a material to a certain limit that uh, that it breaks down it loses its mechanical strength or its insulating properties fine yes let me do the mathematics over here we have some mathematics involved i have got a material this is an insulating material let me increase the thickness a little i have an insulating material right and i have applied a voltage to it i have applied a voltage to it what will happen if i have applied a voltage the charges will come on the metal electrode this insulation has been sandwiched between two metal electrodes positive charge negative charge right isn't it like this it is this insulation has got a thickness of d naught what will happen there would be an a coulombic force of attraction between the positive and the negative charges i would rather say an electrostatic force of attraction i would name it as electrostatic force which is equal to one half q times e q is the charge is the electric field isn't it like this it is what will happen these two charges or the opposite charges will they not try to attract each other they will right this is that force but there is an insulating material in between them they cannot pass through it which means what they cannot pass so they will try to they will tend to compress it they will tend to apply a stress they will try to produce a strain right yes and the compressibility is governed by what compressibility or elasticity is governed by the young's modulus young's modulus or the modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity is what it is the young's modulus which is equal to y this is equal to stress upon strain isn't it like this it is so which means if i'm talking about a mechanical stress over here sm is for mechanical stress so that would be young's modulus y times the strain produced and the strain produced over here would be what so let's say you have compressed it and it has reached a thickness of let's suppose d so the strain produced would be ln of d naught upon d isn't it like this it is it is now can you not see that two metal electrodes with opposite charges in between them is a dielectric or insulation what do you have is this not a system of a capacitor it is so can i define the system of capacitance so c is equal to q upon v can i not write why am i doing this i need this equation basically let's suppose if this is equation number one i don't know q i don't know about q e i could find that by volt per unit distance but i don't know about q so i will put that q over there cv so fe would be what fe would be one half times cv cv for 
this thing for q and for e what do i have i would put it as v upon d naught v upon d naught isn't it like this v upon d v upon d okay so half cv squared upon d isn't it like this it is now what do you have upon d now see for a parallel plate capacitor for a parallel plate capacitor combination this is so this would be epsilon naught into epsilon r area of the plates divided by the distance between them d isn't it like this it is so just put it over there so fe would come out to be one half uh, epsilon naught epsilon r area into volume squared upon d squared isn't it like this it is now now what do i have if i put the area over here the force electrostatic force per unit area it is equal to one half epsilon naught epsilon r v squared upon d squared it is like this or it is not like this it is like this force per unit area is what force per unit area is stress now this is what this is the electrical stress or the electrical pressure which is causing what the mechanical pressure this is the se that one was the mechanical stress over here this is the electrical stress that is causing the mechanical stress the force per unit area or the electrical pressure causing the uh, what causing the mechanical pressure right yes now what do i have this force is compressing the elect dielectric a final thickness will come where from there no further compression would be possible that would be the maximum compressibility limit and that is what that is the equilibrium state where the electrical and mechanical stress would come equal to each other under equilibrium when the final value of thickness has been achieved after that breakdown will occur what will happen under equilibrium the mechanical stress would equal the electrical stress which means what that epsilon naught epsilon r v squared upon 2 d squared would come equal to modulus of elasticity natural log d naught by d fine yes now this v squared by d squared is what this is e squared right this is e squared and this would be equal to what y times natural log of d naught by d multiplied with 2 divided by epsilon naught epsilon r and if you take the under root of this this would be the case fine yes but i need is the voltage the voltage to which it is subjected is the voltage is equal to or i would write a voltage squared is 2 d squared divided by epsilon naught epsilon r natural log of d naught by d and 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 the young's modulus as well now i need that thickness I need that thickness till where it will compress. I need the final thickness to which it would compress and after which it will break down. So to find the final thickness, I would take what? I would take the derivative of this with respect to D. So D with respect to D of V squared and the derivative with respect to D of this whole term. So this would come out to be 2V dV upon d, d and have a look over here this thing is constant 2Y epsilon naught epsilon R is a constant right yes 
what do you have you have d squared and then you have ln of d by d naught so you take the first function you differentiate the second right so what would be the case you take the first you differentiate the second so d squared would be as it is multiplied by differentiation of the first would be 1 upon d by d naught 1 upon d naught by d and then you have got a plus uh, and similarly you will again have to differentiate this so minus a d naught by d squared isn't it like this i have written it over here for myself d squared multiplied by d naught by d yes minus d naught upon d squared yes and then you have plus you take the second and you derivate the first so 2d this is it i'm very weak in these things you just try and do it by yourself so please do the simplifications please do the simplifications what will you have for critical point or for the minimum point you derivate it you equate it to zero so basically if this becomes zero uh, the left hand side becomes zero this one will be divided again zero so you've got what equate to zero okay equate to zero for the critical conditions so this would cancel and this would cancel you're only left with this thing d squared zero is equal to i would write over here d squared into d naught by d d squared into d naught by d no d by d naught now d by d naught and minus d naught by d squared minus d naught by d squared and then plus a natural log of plus 2d natural log of d naught by d this is what i am left with so have a look d naught is gone with d naught d squared is gone with d squared so have a look 2d natural log of d naught by d is equal to is equal to what is equal to d right is equal to d yes is equal to d so this d would cancel out with this d and this is 1 over 2 so ln of d naught by d is 1 over 2 now the reverse of the uh, the inverse of natural log is what the inverse of natural log is uh, uh, a exponential function now i know you cannot see it over here but anyways so the exponential function so what do you have you will have a d naught upon d is exponential of 1 over 2 which means that d naught is equal to d times exponential of 1 over 2 but i need is d so d would be equal to d naught exponential of minus 1 over 2 and if you see the check this so uh, minus exponential of minus 1 over 2 is equal to how much exponential of minus 1 over 2 is equal to 0 0.6 so i would write that d is equal to 0 0.6 of d naught which means this has been 60 percent compressed if you compress the solid dielectric to 60 percent 0.6 of the original length after that it this is the maximum compressibility limit after this it cannot be further compressed and if you further go this will lead to breakdown this is that critical thickness or the minimum thickness till which it can go similarly we can find the field now you can find how much field is required you can see that how much field is required so from e is equal to 2 times y epsilon naught epsilon r yes and ln of yes so 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 you have how much field is required have a look 2 times y epsilon naught is what 8.85 into 10 to the power negative 12 epsilon r would be for that material and ln of d by d naught so uh, ln of d naught by d so d naught is d naught and and d is 0.6 d naught you do the calculations can you not do the calculations you can d naught cancels out with d naught you take 1 over 0.6 take its natural log multiply it with 2 divide by 8.85 in 10 power minus 12 take under root of the whole thing 
what do you have is you can find out the critical voltage by the form by this by this value the critical voltage would come out to be 33.83 33.83 into 10 to the power 8 10 to the power 4 and then under the root the young's modulus y upon the relative permittivity ar and this would be in volts per meter fine yes so have a look talking of electromechanical breakdown i have got an electrical parameter i've got a mechanical parameter this would be the critical field required to cause what to cause electromechanical breakdown is that fine till here it is now i have one thing over here if this critical value the critical field required comes out to be less than the intrinsic field only then there is a possibility of electromechanical breakdown only then is there a possibility of electromechanical breakdown and if this critical field comes out to be greater or equal to the intrinsic value of the field that then what will happen electromechanical breakdown is not possible no electromechanical breakdown why because the intrinsic will come first it will come first right yes we saw over here if the critical value is less than the intrinsic what would happen there is a possibility of electromechanical if this is greater no electromechanical intrinsic will come first for example if i have an example over here so is electromechanical breakdown possible in polyethylene so if i talk about polyethylene over here some specifications are written that is what the intrinsic strength is 0.3 megavolts per centimeter one other thing is uh, uh, the relative permittivity is 2.3 and the young's modulus is 0 0.8 giga pascal which means 0 0.8 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square pascal is newton per meter square so is electromechanical breakdown possible so you find out the critical field which would be 33.83 into 10 to the power 4 multiplied by 0 0.8 into 10 to the power 9 divide by 2.3 under the root do the calculations the critical value comes out to be 63 into 10 to the power 8 63 into 10 to the power 8 this would be volts per meter or 63 into 10 to the power 6 volt per centimeter or i would say that the critical field is 63 megavolt per centimeter so have a look this is far greater far greater than the intrinsic field which means that there is no possibility of electromechanical breakdown which means the intrinsic breakdown has already occurred similarly i have another material and that is silicon rubber that is silicon rubber the specifications are again mentioned over here for silicon rubber that you have uh, the y is 0.02 giga pascal which is 0.02 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter squared relative permittivity is 3.5 and the range of the intrinsic field is given which is about 10 to 28 megavolt per centimeter i would write so is the is electromechanical breakdown possible so i would find out the e critical for this value so just find it out by yourself please 83 into 10 to the power 4 under the root what 0 0.02 into 10 to the power 9 divided by what 3.5 this comes out to be 255 something megavolt per meter you convert it to megavolt per centimeter so that is 2.5 megavolt per centimeter which means this is lying over here uh, now you do check the calculations this question i believe i have had a little bit of a mistake this uh, intrinsic strength please check out on the internet and then do it and you can comment on it depending on the situation that is written over here but the thing the point that i'm talking trying to make is that 
if this value is close enough if this is greater if this is greater but close enough still there is a possibility of electromechanical breakdown why because during the mathematical calculations we ignore a certain number of things we ignore very much things and the most important thing is the field factor the most important thing is the field factor no field is completely uniform even if the electrodes are completely parallel and they are smooth enough still the field is not uniform we've got a factor called the schwager factor which is uh, which ranges from 0 0.95 to 0 0.98 so you multiply that critical field with it uh, to get you uh, uh, in touch with the in comparison with the intrinsic field or if you you know in the worst possible case let's let's say we take it 0.5 let's say we take it 0.5 so then what happens is you multiply the critical field with 0.5 with that field factor or Schwager factor whatever and you compare with the intrinsic field and then you comment on this over here in the in the second case silicon rubber so electromechanical breakdown is possible right but even if for the first case for the polyethylene case even if you multiply this by a factor of 0.5 still the this is far greater and electromechanical is not possible intrinsic will come first so that is what i'm trying to say right yes so i believe i finished this video over here i've got it a little long but i hope you have enjoyed it with me we studied over here was the first was the intrinsic phenomena which i told is the same basic electronic phenomena a very high electric field is provided and then what do you have you have got uh, electronic current and you've got collision ionization and electron avalanche leading to breakdown but this is in the laboratory conditions the intrinsic strengths that we mentioned in the previous video this does not occur in practice this much of a voltages on the insulator these are in laboratory conditions the next is electromechanical but it is only applicable to viscoelastic that material which could be compressed they are compressed to a certain thickness after that they break down we did the calculations for that minimum thickness and the field required for that thickness depending upon the electrical and mechanical parameters and then we saw if one could come which one could come first so which means we are done with the one we are done with the second in the next video we see the thermal breakdown thermal instability and thermal breakdown till the next video take care goodbye